Welcome to episode 176 of Sports Card Nation. Glad to be back. Um, if you didn't uh, catch the announcement I made in the last Sports Card Nation, I am looking for the 48 Leaf Jackie in uh, a condition between 1 or 2 SGC or PSA preferred. If you uh, see one that you think you know that presents well for those uh, lower uh, conditions uh, but if you see one give me a heads up uh, I'm actively looking as well uh, I don't have you know I don't have like a deadline where it has to be the end of this week or next week uh, the only real hard deadline I've I've really set is uh, by the, by the end of national and that's that's about uh, you know 90 in change days uh, away, so no no pressing need, but uh, definitely looking like never uh, before. I have a list of other cards uh, that uh, you know um, that are on my list after that one. That will be a lot cheaper than that one. That one will be the the bigger one on my list, obviously. And for me, uh, the Grail card, and uh, you know, uh, hopefully I'll be able to start to pick a few of these off. Uh, here and there and uh so just uh just just wanted to say that again got a great guest uh for this episode from ttm cast jeff baker he does uh that's his weekly podcast uh has great guests on his show former athletes and uh focuses on uh through the mail autographs but not just uh that and we're gonna talk about content creation ttm uh some of the guests and uh, uh very uh interesting conversation and and fun conversation i think you'll uh, you'll enjoy it so with that being said let's get this party started hey what's up it's your boy Kadeb at mr Kadeb on twitter and remember the hobby is the people are you a new sports card collector or someone that's returning to the hobby maybe you're just looking for a friendly trustworthy community to hang out with and enjoy collecting Midwest Box Breaks has been bringing collectors together for almost four years. With affordable breaks, helpful Twitter treads, and a Discord group packed with generous people who care about the hobby and other collectors. Check out the breaks at MidwestBoxBreaks.com. First-timers can use the coupon code MBB10 and save 10% on their first order. Your first break mail will also include a bonus card so no one strikes out on their first break. Our goal is to bring you as much value as possible. We've even launched an NFT project dedicated to the hobby. Find us on Twitter at Midwest Box Break. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time the show. Real glad to welcome my next guest to the uh, sports card shop at Moco Guest Line. Uh, he's the uh, host of his own podcast. I was uh, blessed and fortunate enough uh, to be a guest on his show, and I felt it was time uh, to return uh, the favor. Mr. Jeff Baker of the TTM cast, welcome. Well, thanks, John. I've been uh, waiting anxiously to be on your show, and <laughs> I'm thrilled to be on Sports Card Nation. Thank you for having yeah. me. I, I felt bad for for making you wait as long as I did. Now now I feel even I feel even worse. So but, no no but, no don't be but, silly. Yeah, but here you are. Uh, glad to talk to you. And I know we've had some conversations. You know, not necessarily on the air. So to speak. your show. I mean, some of the guests uh, you've had on the show now. But uh, before you're working on your fourth year, much uh, like what we are. We started in November uh, of 18th. Obviously. Uh, when you think back to both of our starts uh, in podcasting, I mean, the the landscape has obviously uh, changed, as you well know, a lot more uh, pods that uh, we're, we're, you know, I don't want to say competing against, but there, there are a lot more hobby podcasts today than there were in 2018 uh, and 2019. And uh, but before, I, before I get into content creation, which I definitely want to cover and, and talk about TTMK, uh, your hobby background, I'm, uh, you're, you're from the Massachusetts area. Um, I'm, I'm, a, I'm assuming you're a fan of all the, all the Boston teams, New England team. I am. I am. I, uh, 
I, I was lucky enough to uh, start collecting when I w- was seven years old. My dad uh, owned his own drugstore, and so yeah. he brought he brought home the first packs to me in uh, 1972. And uh, one of the first pack the first pack I opened actually, I think it was the third or fourth card. I don't remember exactly what it was, but it was the 1972 Colin Fist Cecil Cooper uh, Mike Garman rookie card, which I I still have. It is my favorite all time card, and you know I'm a TTMer. So yep. I sent it. I sent it um, all out to get autographed. This exact card. This is the exact card that I opened in 1972. So I've had I'm 56 years old now, and uh, yeah. I, I was thrilled to have it. That, that's how I started collecting. And then um, I have a younger brother, who's a couple years younger than me, and my dad just started bringing home boxes of cards for us, and we would just open cards and trade and flip and just collect cards for. I've been collecting cards since I'm seven years old. That's cool. Our story sort of parallel, a little different years. I also started uh, at seven in 1979, so you got a few years on me, but uh, doesn't matter. We don't get pensions uh, in the <laughs> hobby, so it doesn't make it. But I started too when I was seven, as I've told many times. People have heard the story, like we know, John. But you know, went to the corner store, Brooklyn, New York. Um, was a Yankee fan at the time. I'm I'm a Mets fan now. For that's a story in itself. But uh, uh, Yankee fan at the time. Big Thurman Munson guy. Even though at that point, um, he you know he was gone. Uh, but Reggie, obviously, I wasn't. Well, I wasn't a Reggie fan. He was the toast in New York, Mister October. And I got my first pack, seventy nine tops. And much like you, the third or fourth card in was a Reggie Jackson. And I was hooked. The rest was history. Unfortunately, I don't have that original Reggie that I pulled out of the pack. I I beat it up, threw it around, that sort of thing. But what I did is it's not it's it's on that wall over there. Um, I should take it down and have it on my desk. But I went back and got the card. I got a, a graded eight version just to remind me, kind of you know, keep me in a humble spot that that's where it all started. It's not the value of the card, a seventy nine. Tops PSA eight, you know, Reggie Jackson's probably 20, 30 bucks if that. It's just a, a visual reminder of what got me like kind of you know entrenched in the hobby, where it all kind of started. And for you, it was that uh Fisk Cooper uh Gorman rookie. Uh for me, it was uh that Reggie, even though I'm not a, a Reggie fan, just being a huge superstar of the game. Being in New York at the time, he could have run, like I always say, could have run for mayor and won if that was something he wanted to do. Um, and and the rest is history, right? We we kind of it's whatever that that first pack, that first card uh, for you, the the, the triple uh, Red Sox rookies for me, the Reggie, and and the rest is history. What for you? I know you do obviously TTM. The show's called. When did you first start doing that or take an interest, and, and how did you learn even about it? Well, back when I was a, um, a sophomore in high school, I had a, a history teacher that collected autographs, and he got me really uh, involved in history and uh, involved in collecting autographs. This was kind of before the internet, so you had to work to get addresses, but I wrote a uh, history paper for the uh, National History Essay Contest, and I wrote all sorts of, of Hall of Famers, asking them questions about comparing their era to their, the present day, which would have been about in 1981 or 82. And I got a ton of letters back from guys, and I asked them to sign cards, and I got a card from Mickey Mantle, I got a card from Roger Maris, and I got uh, Sandy Koufax, and Ted Williams sent me a letter, and Walter Alston sent me a letter. And so I just started collecting, and I, I did it for a couple of years when I, through high school, and then uh, when I went to college, I, you know, I kind of got away from it a little. And then I was, this was probably maybe five years ago now, uh, a friend of mine at work was uh, collecting autographs. He's collecting the 1970, 71, 72 hockey set, all autographed. And I got really into it. And I was, I, I just, he, he kind of showed me the ropes a little. And I have hundreds of thousands of cards and just sitting there. And I was like, well, what am I going to do with all these cards? And so <laughs> so, so I said, why don't I send off to some of my, my favorite New England Patriots from the 80s, there's Steve Grogan's and Steve Nelson and those type of guys. And those, they just happen to be good TTMers. So I sent off, started sending off cards to old Patriots, New England Patriots. And uh, I got a bunch signed. And uh, I don't know if you've done TTM, but once you get one or two in, you, you kind of yeah. get hooked. And uh, I enjoyed the 
interaction with, with the athletes, just a, you know, just a one-on-one writing a letter and getting it back. I love getting the mail. And then uh, I was just talking to my family at dinner, just talking about TTM every day. And their eyes would just glaze, glaze over. They're like, oh, my God, I don't care about this. I don't care about your cards. I don't care about your autographs. So I, I said, you know what? I'm going to start a, a podcast because uh, I, I knew nothing about podcast, all, podcasting at all. I was totally uh, uh, uninformed about the whole thing. And I just said, I'm going to start a podcast to start talking to people who love TTM as much as I do. And one of my things that I always wondered was. So not, not, that- to, not, not to cut you off, Jeff. So. Your family was the inspiration because they didn't want to. They didn't want to banter with you. You said, "You know what? I'll find like-minded people if I have to take it to the radio wave." So yeah. it's your family that's the. Uh, you know, you may, you may not like how they didn't really care that much around the dinner table, but they're really what caused TTM Cast to to exist. Uh, uh, if I they did, and they, they they their eyes still glaze over, but now they they at least support me. <laughs> But go ahead. I didn't mean it, but I thought no, it was kind of a, no, it's a okay. funny, um, funny moment. No, there, one, so. one, one of my questions was always, you know, I, I was sending out all these requests to all these former athletes, and I always thought, what is their, what is their feeling about receiving all these requests? Why are they signing uh, cards, and what is their thought about people that don't, they don't know, contacting them and, and asking them questions and, and uh, looking for autographs? And these are guys, you know, that are in the, their 70s, 60s, 70s, and 80 years old. Uh, but they still um, appreciate their fans and appreciate the attention. And part, that's part of the reason I like to bring on former athletes as guests, because I love to talk to them about their career and about uh, dealing with fans, because that's th- that's really important. Yeah. So I'm not, a, you know, to answer your question, you asked me, I'm not a TTM or in the same respect you are. I'm going to step away for a quick break, but we'll be right back with more with Jeff. Hey, everybody. Have you heard about Collectible? It's the one-stop shop where any collector can buy and trade affordable shares in some of the most rare and valuable sports cards and memorabilia in the world, starting from just $5. From 1952 Mickey Mantle PSA 10s and Wilt Chamberlain's iconic rookie uniform to one-of-one Patrick Mahomes RPAs, rare LeBron James logo mans, and everything in between, Collectible is creating never-before-seen access and opportunities for all. Let's grow the hobby we love together. Please note this is not a recommendation or solicitation to buy any security. All investment decisions should be undertaken after doing your own research. We are back with Jeff Baker. My dad grew up basically in Ebbets Field going to Brooklyn Dodgers games almost every day, quite a bit. And when I was in, uh, just before I was, you know, probably a uh, sophomore or junior in high school, you know, he would tell me all those stories and all those meeting the players as they came out of the cars and how they they were easier accessible then than, than we knew them about in the time uh, we were, were living in. And he was just kind of reminiscent. I could see him light up. And I actually had a book. I don't remember how I acquired it, uh, Jeff. Maybe you remember. There was a book that gave out, like, all, like, athletes and celebrities, like, home addresses. Um, I forgot what it was called, but you could buy it. Somebody, I think someone gave it to me. They knew I collected cards, even though I wasn't doing, you know, through the mail autographs. I was uh, going to games and getting stuff signed directly, that sort of thing, but not not through the mail. But when my dad was telling me all these stories about, you know, his days at Ebbets Field and meeting and talking to these guys, and I could see how he almost was like a kid again, uh, you know. Uh, and at the time, in the 80s, he was, you know, in his 50s then. Uh, but he was, you know, lighting up again. I, you know, I said, you know, Pops, I got this book with, like, the address, the, the Brooklyn Dodgers that are still alive. We should write to them, you know, and just tell them, like, how you felt or meeting them or, and how you reminisce about those days. And we sort of made it sort of a, a, a dual project. And, and every letter we wrote, Jeff, was was handwritten. You know, we didn't do, like, the you know, the, the copy and then put their name in there where they were individually written. And uh, I wrote the letter, but my dad would tell, you know, I would say, my name's John Newman. Uh, my father's Barry Newman. He basically grew up in Ebbets Field and he's, you know, telling me the stories of those days. I, I, I obviously wasn't around yet. And 
uh, you know, it, it really makes his day and he lights up and, you know, my dad wants, you know, to, you to know what you meant to him as a, as a fan and, and as a, you know, as a player and a person. And we would send index cards, you know, the three by five yep. index cards. And, and we would just send two of them. Um, you know, I would just say, if you, I know you're busy, if you're in a self-addressed stand envelope, if you could sign, you know, but one for me, one for my dad, we're, we're, you know, keep a scrapbook and, 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 and put it in there. And what amazed us both, Jeff, is some of these guys, most, a lot of them sent letters back along with the index cards. Some sent like printed articles about them. Many of the letters were like, thank you for remembering old, an old Dodger. I don't get a lot of correspondence anymore. It's nice to be remembered. Like it may, you know, a lot of them said this, you know, your letter made my day. Uh, many of them sent more than the index cards back sign. Uh, some sent like if they had a business, they sent business cards. And, you know, we just went and it was just all the old Brooklyn Dodgers or, or people who were in the Dodger organization. But it was amazing to me how many like actually like that correspondence and again sent letters and thank you for for remembering an old guy you know very few people uh you know or some of them i have the letters you know talk about hey i'm still in in contact with this teammate you know we have coffee on monday mornings or we go golfing uh once a month and and you know sharing kind of their life now and uh it was sort of uh you know cathartic on both parts it made my dad's day getting this stuff back and mine too, learning about these guys, even though I knew a lot about them already. And for many of them, they couldn't thank us enough for reaching out to them. And uh, uh, so that's, you know, in a way that's our, our brush with, with TTM, but do you get a lot of that too, even nowadays? Yeah, I do. You know, what's nice is um, I, I uh, usually send out when I send out a, a, a request now, um, I always ask them if they want to be on the show because I'm yeah. always looking for guests. So yeah. I've had some great returns. Uh, Clarence uh, Scott, who played for the Cleveland Browns, he was very, very nice. I think the the next day after I sent him the, you know, he got the the request. He called me and said, "I'd love to be on the show," and we talked for a while. And uh, you know, I learned about his his family, and it was just really nice. Uh, Tom Henderson, I just got I had him on the show. Um, yep. last week and he you know he played on the 1972 olympic team and he played in the nba for nine years he was great uh rick middleton from the boston bruins i sent him a request he he called me so that you know i do get um a lot of interaction just from from putting out uh you know it, the, bill atkinson who pitched for the montreal expos so some of these these guys do appreciate um you know sending out requests and they want you know they it's nice to talk to them about their careers in dealing with fans. So it, uh, it is, it is really nice. And every once in a while, I'll just pick up the phone and, and uh, you know, it'll be, be some athlete that I had sent a letter to that, that called me, you know, a month later. And it's, it's just, it's just really uh, nice to talk to these guys. I, it, it's, uh, you know, it's fun to build a relationship with these guys. These guys, I yep. saw them, most of these guys play and, you know, we're, we're in awe of their physical talents and, you know, it's nice to, talk to them about their career. And I think they really like to reminisce about um, their teammates and, and uh, their time in the public eye. And, and they do appreciate their fans. On average, how many requests a week do you tip? I mean, obviously every week can vary, but on average, how many a week do you send out? Would you I send out 10 a week. That's my, okay. that's my goal. 10 a week. Yeah. And you, I mean, everything's tracked so you can tell who, who you receive back, who has it. I mean, what, what, you know, obviously they come back in different time periods. Some are quicker to respond than, than others. But on average, if you send ten, like what is your average of of respo- uh, responses? Correspondence I get returns? probably seventy percent return, which yeah. which is which isn't bad. And you know, there's some. I got uh, Johnny B- Damon back from the Red Sox. Probably three years later, I've gotten you know this every once in a while. You the, a surprise will come in the mail because I all I do is send a a blank uh, return envelope. I don't know who's, who, who's inside. So everyone I open is like opening Christmas present. I know my co-host, he puts the initials on his return envelope. So he, he knows who the co- usually knows who yeah, his return is, yeah. but I, I yeah. do it. I do it blind. And uh, it, it's always great when you get, you know, you get something that's been out there for a while and you just never give up hope. I, you know, I've, I, we, we've done stories on guys that have gotten 
stuff back 15, 20 years later. So you just, you just never know you what's going to come know. in the mail the next day. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's awesome. Um, you know, like you said, you've had a lot of these, uh, folks on the show and you, you've gotten to talk to them about their careers. Like you said, their, their fan interactions. You ever, you ever get, does that stuff make you nervous or have you done it enough now where it's sort of old hat? Well, just a funny story. Probably one of my first, first, uh, returns, uh, in terms of dealing with uh, somebody that I really truly truly idolized was Steve Garvey. I met Steve yep. Garvey at a, a card show here in Massachusetts, and he was so nice. And he still be on on the show. He gave me his email address, made the arrangements. It took a while to get get him uh, to interview him, and this was probably like three and a half years ago. So I hadn't really had my 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 show was fairly new still. I didn't have a lot of listeners yet. Well, I interviewed Steve. I went in to go. Uh, Put, play my record, you know, get my interview, that, and there was nothing there. The, the tape was right. blank. I, I was like, the file was blank, and I, I just it, it killed me. And I, I couldn't bring myself to going back to asking him for a second interview. And then um, I don't know about the beginning of the year. I said, okay, it's been three years. I'll, I'll go to the wall, the well, one more time. And, and I reached out to him, and I. Uh, I've been texting him every once in a while, you know, congratulating him, a happy birthday, or thanking for him to sign a card. Please sign some cards for me through the mail. So I, I wasn't a total stranger at that point. And uh, he, he came back on, and this time I, I made sure <laughs> there was no technical difficulties. I don't know if you've done that with any of your guests, but that was... Man, that was our, the- our, our stories parallel very eerily similar. To, uh, my first guest ever was on episode four of this show, now, it wasn't Steve Garvey. It was a gentleman uh, by the name of Clay Plogger, who is, uh, uh, at the time, uh, was uh, big into breaking Clay's cards. Now he's a, a uh, uh, bulk grading submitter all these years later. But it was the first interview. It's when I decided to make the show an interview show. And he was the very first guest. Same thing. We did like a 45-minute interview. I thought I hit record. Uh, I thought I saw the light on. Uh, we hang up the phone, and like you, I, I go to, to play it back, and I realize I never hit record. And so I called them back up, same day, uh, and I said, you're not going to believe this, Clay. I said, uh, I thought I hit record, and everything we just talked about doesn't exist except in our mind. And he goes, ah, it happens, man. First time out, I get it. He goes, I can't do it again right now, but let's let's do it tomorrow. So we actually did a second interview the, the next day. Uh, so for those who, who listen to episode four, that interview you hear um, is actually the second take because the first one uh, never never got officially uh, recorded. So hearing you tell that the Garvey story, uh, you know, uh, it's it was eerily similar. Uh, so funny, funny uh, parallel yeah, I, there. I thought I was going to cry. There's very few things that <laughs> that make me that upset, but I was just so upset. And it's what? things you learn, right? It's things you learn yeah. when you do the show. You're new to it, and I thought I hit every the perfect record the recording, and there was a file there when I went to download it, but it was there was just nothing there. I was, you know, for me, I just felt terrible because, in a sense, I just w- wasted that person 45 minutes. You know, I was calling them just to say, hey, this happened. Uh, and before I could even ask him, hey, when can we do this again? I, I really didn't expect them to do it the same day. I just want to let them know what happened. And he said, I can't do it now, but let's, can we do it tomorrow this time? And I'm like, yeah. And I, you know, I apologize multiple times and, uh, you know, we, we laughed the, the next day. He's like, yeah, everything good. You know, want to do a te- <laughs> you want to do a test run or, you know, I'm like, no, I know what I, I know what I did yesterday. I, I make sure not to do that. And so when I hit record, I made sure like the light was on before we start going. Yep. And, and so, like you said, you learn by, by trial and error is the only time. Uh, fortunately, I've ever done it. to hear from one of our great sponsors, but after that, we'll be back with more with Jeff Baker. The Sports Card Shop is your small-town local card shop with the global reach. Located in New Buffalo, Michigan, the shop is one of the most accessible in the Midwest. In addition to being an authorized Panini Direct Dealer, the Sports Card Shop carries all major trading card brands, including Tops, Upper Deck, Pokemon, Yu-Gi-Oh!, and more. 
With all that new wax, a half million singles, and showcases full of graded cards, you're sure to find something great for your collection, whether you're just starting out or a seasoned collector. The Sports Card Shop is your one-stop shop. So call us, come see us, or visit us on the web and social media. Our phone number is 269-469-0140. Website is thesportscardshop at moco.com. The Sports Card Shop is part of the MoCo Retail Group, connecting sports, the hobby, and people around the world. Sports Card Nation is back with TTM cast Jeff Baker. Is there anyone that, um, you know, you've, you've done it enough now, Jeff, where I, 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 you probably don't get nerves or butterflies, if you will, uh, other than maybe normal ones that you get just in general. Is there any, you know, is there anyone that, that's got you maybe more, you know, nerve nervous than than another guest, or or not not really at this point. Yeah, not anymore. When I first started, I, I was a bundle of nerves, and I'm sure you are too. You know, you just yeah. you're just not comfortable in front of the microphone. Um, I, I'm not that um, comfortable speaking in public. That's not one of my fortes, but I, I've gotten a lot better, and um, I, I'm fine one on one. But just to for, you know, for to be on the radio and to be on a, a podcast, I was I was a little nerve wracking the first couple times I did it. But then once I got comfortable with it, I didn't really have a problem. I, you know, I've had you know Antoine Walker, I've had a lot uh, Michael Rizzioni, I've had I've had yep. a, Jim, Jim Cott, I've had a lot of guys that I truly idolized. That that you know it was just when, once you get that first question and they're just people and it's just talking. Yep. You know, it's just talk you know, it's really i what i what i try to do is just make them comfortable so that they know that you know not i'm not mike wallace in 60 minutes i'm not trying to gotcha right i'm just here to talk about yeah. stuff i want to make you look good i want to promote whatever you want to promote i want to have fun i don't want to i don't want to make you look bad i've had you know i had i think i had one or two times where i interviewed someone and they said well you know that i really shouldn't have said that can you take that out I have no problem doing that. You know, yeah. oh, I, you know, I, I sp- he, they spoke badly about a person that really they, they, you know, that, that it was going to make them look bad. So I don't want to make them look bad. I, I appreciate yeah. them. You know, they, they're giving up their time to yeah. come on my show. Usually, that, you know, that there's no benefit from them. I'm sure you have the same thing that you know yeah. you're talking to someone because they love they they love what they're doing and they love the hobby or they love you know they love talking about their career and it gives them an opportunity to shine and that's what I want to do. Yep, no, no doubt. If, if I got to ask you this, uh, you know, you've had a lot of athletes on. Is there one person like you haven't had on yet that would be like a, a big deal to you? Like who, if you had only pick one, you know, for me, I, I've said like, you know, obviously the, uh, alive. You know, for me, it would be Jackie Robinson if it was dead or alive. But for me, I'd love to meet Joe Green. Is a guy I love as a Steeler fan. I. Uh, I'd love to to get to talk to him. Is there a guy you haven't interviewed yet that would be at the top of the list if you could make it happen? Oh yeah, that's easy. Fred Lynn, number nineteen. Fred Lynn. Yeah. I love I loved him since nineteen seventy five, since the day he 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 started playing. I was i like you know I was uh, ten years old when he started playing. I've uh, you know I. I've met him at shows. I've talked to I've talked to him. I shook his hand. I got my picture taken with him. He I sent him a picture. He signed it for me. Uh, I've got uh, probably I, I probably have every one of his cards. I have his uh, an autographed jersey of his, but I have not been able to get him on the podcast. I've asked him on Twitter. I've asked him in person. I've asked him through the mail. I just haven't been able to get him. So uh, I mean, you know, what do you not to not to be nosy? I, I don't. I mean, what do you typically get? He just says I'm busy. I mean, what what kind of response? Are you? Yeah, some sometimes uh, you know I don't get any response at all. Sometimes a lot right. of times I'm sure you get this. Oh yeah, I'm interested. Give me you know give me a call or you send me an email or I give him my business card and I say reach out to me because a lot of these guys are private and they don't want to give out yeah. their number. And yeah. then I just don't hear from him. I'm sure. I'm sure you get that pro- that uh, response sometimes too. Yeah, yeah. Uh, going back to TTM, you know, I mentioned that book that I had in the late '80s, and it existed in the early '90s. I remember. I forgot what it was called. You could buy it. Um, how do most TTMers? Obviously, there's message boards. Everyone communicates and stuff. But is there a book like that that existed for me in in the '80s and '90s when I was getting those Brooklyn Dodger guys? home addresses or something like that still in circulation or are not at this point? And how do you get, other than, you know, communicating with fellow TTMers of, of the hobby, 
how how do you go about finding out you know an address to mail uh, cards do you say boy john you're old books books do yeah. <laughs> anyone do books anymore <laughs> There's kind of two websites, right? There's the Sports Card Forum, sportscardforum.com, and that's a free site that you can go on and see who's signing and get uh, addresses. All you have to do is uh, sign up, get an ID and password, and it, it, yeah. it's pretty good. There's another one called sportscollectors.net, and that's $15 for the year. And that's basically the same thing, but it's a little more, it's organized a little better, and it's a little, there's a, a lot more people on that. So you get it, you get a, a good smattering of who's signing and how much these guys are charging and who, you know, the recent successes. So you can, um, if you're working on a set, like I'm working on the 1978 top set to get signed, you can go into yeah. the 1970, they have it organized. So you can go into the 1978 top set. It has all the guy, all the cards from in number order. And then it has, uh, if the guy is signing, uh, what, when his last success was, if he's still alive, and yeah. uh, then you just click on it, and there's his address is right there. So it's really all database driven. There's also a um, a sports car sports address sports a- list sports address list. I think it's called. Um, you can purchase those, and there's a new one that comes out every year for basically every sport and celebrity. And then there's a comp- there's a, a site called Star Tiger that's more um, celebrity driven. But you can get yeah. all the addresses for for celebrities. So uh, between that and just going, and if there's a guy that you want, you want to see if you can get his address, you can just pi- type in the name in uh, their their uh, in the white page. You know, white pages online, and usually yeah. you can find their address. Yeah, it's amazing. You know, even in today's day and age, it is how you can track down someone if you if you work hard enough and do a little, you know, elbow grease. But, uh, yeah, I, I just, you know, remember, you know, that was the only time I really did it. And I just had that book and I thought it was the, the coolest thing. I just remember thinking, man, if I was famous, I don't know if I'd want everyone to have my address in this book. But, uh, you know, like you said, you got all these uh, communications that, that work together to, like you said, when they've, you know, how recent they're they're signing, what you know, what kind of response, and uh, makes the makes the work a little bit easier. And uh, you know, obviously, if you know someone who's just, hey, this person just hands down doesn't respond, you save yourself a stamp. But what stamps keep going up uh, every year? It'll soon be a buck a piece. I think right. they fifty five. They're, they're, cents going, they're going up uh, mid July. They're going up to uh, sixty cents. <laughs> Yeah, and you got to remember, you're, you're, it's costing you double because of the one you're putting in there that you're sending them to. You yep. don't people forget about that. So, anytime you can, you know, you, if you know someone is sort of a a futile effort, it can kind of save you some time and and eventually a buck twenty. Uh, you can save the sort of uh, go in a different uh, go in a different direction. About that time for another quick break, but we'll be back with Jeff. Pastime Marketplace has a line of graded card cases that are waterproof, airtight, dust tight, and hardened to protect and organize your valuable collection. Each of our cases come with pre cut and pre formed foam so you don't have to cut and tear the foam when you get your case. The pre cut foam inserts are sized to hold PSA, Beckett, SGC, and CGS slabs. Store it all safely and securely with a case from Pastime Marketplace. Check them out at www.pastimemarketplace.com. We are back with Jeff Baker. Now, has the podcast, obviously you've got, you know, it focuses on TTM, but you've had, you know, guests on there from the hobby, CEOs and, and collectors and whatnot. Has the podcast changed how you hobby at all? Or, or you, I mean, do you... You open new stuff, or you strictly really, you know, TTM. No, no, I, I love. I, I've always been a card collector, so and sports yeah. memorabilia collector. So when I go to shows, um, you know, t- I do two things. I, I look for vintage stuff, unopened vintage stuff, which I really, really like. I, I like the junk era stuff. You know, I like yeah. us to open a box of nineteen ninety football cards and then sending those those out to get signed. And but I also like the new stuff. I love the uh, the tops heritage. Uh, yeah. Those are great cards to get to send out to get signed. Some of the newer stuff, um, the Chrome isn't as good to get signed, obviously because of the coding. Uh, but I do love I do love the cards. I I like all the stuff that Panini does. The selects. I'm not I'm not a big fan of the the uh, Panini stuff that doesn't have the logos. But yeah. um, you know I I, I well, love. I, you probably won't have to worry about that. No, I know we don't have to worry <laughs> about that. So. <laughs> so uh, 
the other thing, you just came back uh, recently from spring training. You went down to the – is that something you do uh, every year, every so often uh, that you get down to, to Florida to, to check them out, or how does that work for you? Well, back in the day, I actually lived in Phoenix for a couple of years. So yeah. I, I had um, – that was my real first exposure to um, extended time at spring training. And I used to we, I used to go to probably, I don't know, three or four games every weekend – uh, just to go to the games. This wasn't even not to collect autographs. This was yeah. just, I just love baseball that much, but I would get autographs back then as well. And uh, this is the first time that I, I went down uh, with my wife. We went down to uh, Fort Myers to the Red Sox uh, spring training. We, we stayed at Fort Myers beach and we, we took in, we weren't sure when we left the, the uh, lockout was still on. So we weren't even sure yeah. if we were going to go to any games. And luckily uh, when we got down there, just about when we got down the second or third day, we were down there. The lockout ended, so the spring training wasn't that crowded this year. It was pretty easy to get tickets to the games. Um, yeah. We went on the, the we went on on a Sunday morning, and it was probably thirty five degrees in Florida. It was freezing cold, <laughs> <laughs> and we went to we went to. Um, I didn't I didn't have I didn't bring any cards with me. I wasn't really prepared autograph wise, so um, we went. I just t- kind of get the lay of the land. We took some pictures. I took some pictures of Marcella Meyer. Uh, who's the Red Sox first big, yep. first uh, round draft pick last year? Eighteen uh, year old kid, his big big kid, um, and we, we, I took some pictures of him. And my wife took a picture of me in front of the Red Sox spring training sign, and that's basically what I had. And so then we went back um, on Tuesday, and we went before the game. It was before the game because the game was at one o'clock, so we went to the spring training site before the game. And I just happened to be in the right place at the right time a lot of times because I was literally sitting uh, at at a fence, just sitting there. And Marcelo Mar- Meyer walked right up to the fence, basically, and started signing for a couple people. So I, I saw him and Blaze Jordan, and I actually got my picture in the Boston Herald when I came back. Yeah, my picture. Was I saw that, but go ahead. Yeah, Boston Herald. So it was yeah. fun. And then I saw I got um, JD Martinez and Christian Arroyo and a couple other guys. There was uh, there was all sorts of guys signing uh, uh, Tristan Casse there the new, the new um, the number one prospect for the Red Sox he was yeah. signing uh, Bobby Dahlbuck was signing um, Xavier Bogarts uh, Devers all these they they were all signing it was great because the the Red Sox spring training facility they had probably seven or eight fields so the guys would have to cross from one field to the other field. So when they were crossing from one field to the other field, they would usually stop and sign for, for eight or 10 people. So it was yeah. really nice. And then we also went to the Minnesota twins, uh, spring training, uh, air and fields, and, uh, they weren't set up as nice as the Red Sox. But again, I, I wasn't really, I wasn't, I wasn't there for autographs. So I was just there for, to watch baseball, but I saw yeah. a bunch of twin signing. This was kind of, bef- this was before Correa signed. So, uh, he wasn't there yet, but yeah. um, it was, it, it was good. It was kind of eye opening. I'm going to go back next year, uh, a little more prepared. I'll have some cards and some some photos to get signed. And uh, it, it was the guy that I, I was amazed how cordial all the players were. Now I don't know if this was because the lockout was over and they were thrilled <laughs> to be back, or that's how they all they always behave. But um, it was really uh, a fun fun time to go. Um, it's hard to get to get autographs at the park because of the fencing. Yeah, you know, when at the game, you, it's really better to go to the practice facility because even like on the as I said, dirt the day of the game, all the major league players were out there practicing before the before the game. Like at eleven o'clock, they were out taking batting practice, taking field and practice, and uh, li- literally, you know, Jason Baratek, Dwight Evans, uh, Alex Cora, all those guys. I, I mean, I could have shaken sh- shook their hand. That's how close yeah. they were. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, a real quick Jason Veritek story since you mentioned him. Uh, I've, I've mentioned this on the show, but uh, a Little League World Series, uh, well, I, I didn't make it. Uh, we were one win away from getting there. Uh, I had not lost any games as a pitcher. Played other positions, obviously, when I wasn't, Jim, but was undefeated as a pitcher. Uh, we had to win the next game to go to Williamsport, and we played Jason Veritek's uh, Little League team. And I uh, uh, got my only loss that uh, that year, let's just say, uh, not my best performance. Uh, we were beat pretty soundly and uh, uh, gave up a, a long ball to uh, said 
uh, Mr. Veritech. And so there's my 15 minutes. But uh, so it's Jason Veritech prevented me from getting to the Little League uh, World Series. Well, so, he's actually uh, a pre- he's actually a pretty good cheat hammer. I've gotten him through the mail. <laughs> and I'm sending to the team. So <laughs> yeah. So there's my Jason Veritech. You should, uh, you should send him a letter. Say, Jason, <laughs> you kicked my butt when we were in Little League. Yeah, he. I mean, he, I'm sure he'll remember making the Little League World Series. I don't think he'll remember. Maybe, well, you know, the specific game itself. You know, you play eight to ten games in the process of, of getting there. But uh, it will be fun. Maybe, I, you know, somewhere uh, the light bulb goes on, I'll, I'll send something like that out just, just to see what he says. And uh uh, you know, be a funny moment. But uh, uh, congrats to you too. You're now writing uh, an article for one of my favorite websites, uh, Sports Collector uh, Daily. Uh, kind of talk about how that uh, came about. Well, um, so somewhere along the line, uh, Rich M- Rich Miller, who's the editor of Sports Collectors Daily, uh, he was my first guest on my podcast way back, and uh, I think I just I reached out to him and asked him to be a guest and. Uh, he was very nice. He came on and we we, we spoke uh, for a while. And he's been kind of my lucky charm. I had him on as my uh, 100th guest. I had him on as my first guest on my uh, syndicated radio show. And I've written, I don't know, maybe a handful of articles, six or seven articles for him, um, just on different subjects. On, I, I collect the 1992 uh, game day set autographed. I wrote an article on that. I wrote an article on uh, getting autographs. Uh, TCM through spring training. I've written a couple of other articles, and they they they're, um, they haven't had a lot of coverage uh, for TCM. And I and I uh, talk, spoke to Rich a couple weeks ago, and I said, Rich, how about I, I write a, a weekly article on TTM and TTM Cast, and let people know uh, who my guest is, and kind of get an overview of who the guest is, so that they we can promote the show, and also we'll promote um, my returns, let people know who's signing. And I put in uh, pictures of, of the cards that I, I get back and also some guys that I know uh, sign. And we're just kind of giving it some focus to TTM, and, and it's good content for them, and it, it's a fun article for me to write, and, and I really enjoy working with Rich. Rich is a, a great uh, ambassador for the hobby. I don't know if you've had him on the show, but yep, yep, he's, I have. Uh, yep, he's a good guy. He, he's a really nice guy, and, and I really um, like to support anything he does. And if he ever asks me for anything, I'll be I'll be first in line for him. And um, this is this is just a, an opportunity to promote TTMing and and, and pro, pro, uh, podcast. Yep. No doubt, no doubt. Time to step aside here from another one of our great sponsors. But right after that, we'll be back with Jeff Baker. Iron Sports Cards is your number one source for all your PSA and other grading submissions. Their elite status improves turnaround times. Heck, they even provide the card savers. Their chat rooms provide updates on all your submissions. They also offer wax options and single cards to cover all the bases. Check them out on Facebook at Iron Sports Cards Group or on the web at ironsportscards.com or even give them a call at 1-877-I-R-O-N-P-S-A. Rob's got you covered. Sports Card Nation has returned with TTM cast Jeff Baker. You know, when it comes to TTM, I mean, uh, Jeff, do you think, has it plateaued? Are there more people kind of getting into it? Where, how, if, if it's a graph, how is it going up and to the right? Is it sort of level? Where would you where would you put that at? No, I think it's really going up. J- just a, a quick story when I when I first started doing this, I, I remember like it was yesterday. One of the questions I asked Rich back in, in 2019 is like, Rich, where's this hobby going? Because if you remember, John, the collectors were there weren't a lot of us collecting, right? It was all it was all people our age. It wasn't a lot of young young people. Yeah. The hobby was kind of flat. There was there was oh. not not a lot going on. And um, didn't really see that this huge boom that we've had. And I think that a lot of the new people that have gotten into the hobby, well, a certain a number of those have gotten involved in TTMing. And I thought there, I think there's a lot more people TTMing just talking to the athletes that are getting requests. They're seeing a lot more requests than they had in the past. And I think that um, as a, a part of the hobby, I, I think it's it's growing. Now, obviously, it's not growing as fast as the whole hobby itself is, but there's still a good number of people that do TTM and my, um, my listenership reflects that because my listenership is, is, has been way up in the last year. 
Yeah, no doubt. I think, it, like you said, it, the hobby has really, you know, it, it just expanded. It's just more people doing uh, everything. You got more people buying, more people selling, more people breaking, more people doing TTMs, more people doing content creation, more, you know, everything is going uh, up and in, into the right, and I, I think uh, that's you know I think that's where uh, where we're headed for at least uh, you know the next couple of years. We'll see how the fanatics um, you know worldwide takeover I like to call it yeah. uh, affects the hobby. I think the next you know I've said on this show, Jeff, the next three to five years are going to really be indic- indicative of what maybe the next twenty you know ten to twenty. Uh, will be like and uh you know it's gonna be a, a you know very important what happens in the next uh three to five years because you know i've said it all the time i'm 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 a welcoming guy I, I i say the more the merrier but you know as fast as people get into something they can exit stage left too and that's where things kind of start to go uh the other way so the next three to five years are going to be uh very indicative and telling of you know how the future of the hobby is going to be uh we were kind of spoiled the last two to three years even during a worldwide pandemic where you wouldn't think that would be the case it was just sort of the the perfect storm uh, of ingredients to have the hobby explode and uh as i'm sure we both talked about why and and uh, you know now that that's sort of settled down we'll you know uh, we'll see how everything uh, settles out but it's it's still uh, again, a lot of new people, a lot of new people sticking around, and that's uh, I'm one of those guys. I'm you know, I'm not a get off my lawn guy, so uh, I think it's very good for the hobby, content creation, and, and everything else we kind of mentioned. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, baseball's in trouble, honestly, which which yeah. pains me. I think as a game, it's it's more in trouble, and you can see that by if you go to uh, any of the retail outlets. You can find baseball cards. There's, there's baseball yeah. cards all over the place, but try to find a football card or a basketball card. It, it's impossible. Yeah. And, and Pokemon cards as well. And, um, you know, I think, you know, soccer cards are, are going yep. to continue to be popular. F1 wrestling, all these rest, the wrestling, wrestling cards yeah. are now unbelievable. So yep. you know, people want the, all these wrestling cards. So, um, you know, a hobby is cyclical. And, and, you know, we'll, eventually if the um, value – goes away from it and we lose some of these investor types um you know there's people yeah. that are always going to want to collect the, they'll collect something right they're gonna well, there's, there's always going to be people that want to yeah it's a gene i think it's a gene in people so like you said they're gonna, whether whatever they might collect uh, i think people who are collectors will find they might move to something else but they'll they'll collect uh something i don't want to be a bash on baseball but i will agree with you i think baseball is sort of its own worst enemy at times jeff i think they they lack in promoting some of their their stars where other sports do. I'm not. A, I don't know about you, but uh, uh, even though he's from nearby Rome here, I'm not a big fan of of Rob Manfred. Uh, I I think he's uh, one of the worst commissioners, if not the worst commissioner, uh, in in the four major sports. And um, you know, I you know some of the lockout and and you know labor stuff. I think falls. Uh, at his feet, but uh, thankfully, I'm, I'm going to give you credit. It was you going down to Florida that ended uh, the lockout. <laughs> right it's, you know, uh, not Rob, not, not the commissioner. Well, you so, know what? I don't know if you, I don't know if you noticed the the first couple week of the season attendance is down. There's a lot of empty seats. So I don't know if it's the weather's been bad or you know once the once the kids get out of school, it's going to ramp up again, but. I think, the, you know, it looked – I was watching a bunch of games today, and I know, you know, in Cincinnati the weather wasn't great. Detroit the weather wasn't great. Um, you know, there's a there, there was a, there's a, a ton of seats. Even you look at the Yankees, the Yankees and Red Sox uh, this past weekend, there were a lot of seats open. Yeah. I think it's a lot of what you said. I think you got – when school lets out, you'll, you'll get more. When the weather warms up, people don't like going to uh, cold weather games, especially baseball. Football is a different – a different breed of animal, but baseball people want it, want it to be uh, warmer. Uh, I think you know. I think some of it too, Jeff. I think you agree. Is people upset that there was even, even though it really didn't affect the length of what the regular season is going to be, that there was a lockout. You know, uh, while we're you know here we are dealing with pandemic and all these other restrictions, and it just seems you know millionaires and billionaires sort of arguing, uh, uh, you know, to to the average person. Uh, over silly stuff and and that probably rubbed 
people the wrong way. Uh, I think baseball sort of not marketed itself uh, better. I think the length of the games, which is something uh, they're in progress of working on uh, next year, I think will uh, baseball will uh, integrate the the pitch clock and um, you know the shift rules, and they're they're trying to to speed up the game because I, I think that's what one of the biggest fan complaints is that. You know, I'm there three and a half hours. As much as I love getting out of the house, that's a bit uh, boring. My wife even said, you know, I was watching the Met game, and uh, she's a baseball girl, and she's like, this is kind of boring, you know. And, uh, you know, I I enjoy it because, you know, I've enjoyed it and played it. And so I'm probably going to be the one that will overlook stuff where maybe someone else wouldn't uh but uh, i get it you know i get all those things i think it's i don't don't know if it's one thing i think it's just the percentages of all those things uh combined uh can it be fixed sure it can anything can potentially be fixed uh we'll see how they go about doing it and um you know the weather school that that stuff will fit kind of correct itself uh, as it warms up and school gets out and uh you know ballparks will be more full than we're we're seeing right now, but uh, will they be sold out? That's a whole nother uh, show in itself. But uh, you know, uh, you know, I, I'm a baseball guy, so I hope they can uh, fix that stuff for for the sports' sake. Uh, and uh, you know, we can avoid these every every. It seems like every few years, there's always this looming threat of a, of a work. They got to get past that because uh, even just the threat. Gets people talking about it, and and that's not a neg- that's not something you want people talking about. Even when it doesn't necessarily happen, just the fact that it's even possible or potential there uh, is not something you, you want people to talk about. What's happening on the field? You know, the great young superstars coming up. You don't want people talking about, hey, if these side two sides don't get together, uh, we may not get baseball, or maybe you know we may lose games or or part of the year. That that stuff you don't want in in discussion when you can avoid it and it just seems like with baseball it seems that other sports do a lot better job at not having that happen and not being in the forefront uh where baseball seems to be every few years again here we go again type of deal and i know i agree you know they should have learned from 94 uh 94 you know you 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 know that you learn from past mistakes or you hope you learn uh, you know, we talked about learning from mistakes with podcasting to get better, right? But baseball doesn't seem to to get that uh, in some aspects. And so hopefully the light bulb goes on and, and they figure some stuff out and we can talk about, uh, you know, guys like Marcelo Mayer and Bobby Witt Jr. And, and, and that and not, hey, you know, their second year in, uh, we're not, we're without baseball again. So, right. uh, you know, they, and I think they know that it's just knowing and doing are, are, are two different. So one more quick break, but we'll be right back with Jeff after that. We love our listeners without you. There is no us. We care about your opinions and feedback and invite you to reach out to us on any of our social media accounts on Instagram at Sports Card Nation Podcast, Twitter at Sports Card N-A-T-I-1 or email the show at Sports Card Nation PC at gmail.com. We don't ask for much, but if you really like the show, give us a shout out, tell your friends or give us a follow on our social medias. If you enjoy the show, please give us a positive review on iTunes or any of the platforms you are listening on. Thank you. We've returned with more with Jeff. Uh, you know, we got the National coming up uh, here uh, at the end of July. It's uh, one day closer every day. And it, it always seems that, like, you know, it's in that rearview mirror, and then it's like objects in that rearview mirror are closer then they appear. We're 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 getting there. Is that something? Uh, will we see you there? Is that something you normally uh, go to, or is it? Yeah, you know, I, I I had a health scare last year. I don't know if it, you heard about. Yeah, what I do. I do. Chicago remember. last yep. year. So yep. I was I was in Chicago literally for I don't know three or four hours, and I had a health scare. And I I made the I made the uh, the national on Sunday, the very last day. My wife was pushing me around in a wheelchair. We went for about two hours. I was not feeling that great. I've been to yeah. I don't know three or four nationals. I went to the one in Atlanta in uh, Anaheim a while ago. I went to the one in Oakland. My uh, high school 
my college graduation, my brother's high school graduation, my parents sent us to Oakland to the National, which was fabulous. And I've been to Cleveland uh, a couple years ago, but um, Chicago, I was really looking forward to Chicago and that kind of fell apart. So we, I am going to uh, Atlantic City. Very excited about that. It's driving distance for us. So yeah, that, yeah. That's very nice. Uh, my co-host Drew and I will both be there. We're going to be uh, do it, doing our best to garner some guests and um, network around and meet people and, and, and talk to fellow collectors. And, and it's, uh, you know, it's, it, it, we're really looking forward to it. Yeah, no doubt. It's 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 the one show I always say, uh, Jeff. I try to go to uh, every year. Um, it's uh, like you said. Uh, I'm in Syracuse now. I'm originally from New York. You're in in Massachusetts. Definitely driving distance can bring more stuff than you know. Last year, and I uh, I'm glad you're doing. Well, I do remember that uh, last year. I remember uh, I, I messaged you, and that, that's that's rough. That to actually make the trip and then in a sense not be able to sort of enjoy the the fruits of, of your labor but you know health as you well know health has got to come first uh, so you can tend all the nationals uh, uh from from there forth and uh including this one Atlantic City like you said driving distance uh that that's more fun my wife's actually going she doesn't care about cards she doesn't care you know she's supportive of what I do yep. but like sort of like you know, she's like, go have fun. I'm going to be on the beach with a beverage, an umbrella, and a book, and uh, making a vacation out of it. And uh, so, mine too. Be, she's going to the yeah. casino and going on the beach, and <laughs> we'll go for dinner, and she'll yeah. have a, she'll have a ball. Yeah, and that's yeah, that's how we're that's how we're uh, approaching it uh, as well. And it's it's nice that uh, she'll get to go. I mean, normally if I was flying somewhere, like she, when I went to Chicago, I mean, she has no interest. You know, there's no. Uh, uh, you know, no beachfront uh, really to to speak of. So she's like, "I'll see you uh, when you get back. Have fun." But uh, this, uh, what she heard, it's Atlantic City. She's like, "Well, let's uh, let's rent a house on the water, and you know, some people could stay with us. I'll enjoy that part, and you go enjoy all the other. You can enjoy the cards and the the show and the podcast and all that stuff. So, and like like you said, that's 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 what we're doing." As well, but it's nice that they can go and enjoy, you know, maybe di- in a different sort of way than than what we're doing. Uh, you know, it's it just the same. And uh, driving, you know, you know, when flying, I always only take one bag, so I gotta roll up my shirts and the pants and try to get as much in that carry on as I can. It's a, I'm 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 I've gotten very good at that, by the way. I probably could a uh, class, but uh, now I won't have to worry about that uh, too much. I can load up. Uh, the SUV and, uh, you know, as much stuff as we can pack uh, yep. in there will we'll be good. And I'm looking forward to it. We're, we're one day closer and uh, I look forward to, to meeting you in person and, and seeing you. And uh, obviously in better health uh, this year, uh, which is the, the most important thing. And uh, that will be a, a good thing. So I always give the guests, uh, Jeff, as, as you know, you know, the final word, any websites where people can find uh, you, you're, what you're doing, uh, and all that good stuff. Take your time. There's no time limit. To give out all that important. Information. Okay, so I got a, a couple things for you. First, guys, my podcast is TTM Cast. We have a website. It's ttmcast.com. It's available basically anywhere podcasts are: Apple, Spotify, all, all, all the podcast places. Just put in TTM Cast. You can find it. We have a new show every Sunday. We post a new show. Every Sunday, I host it along with uh, my friend and co-host, Drew Pelto. He's out of Dallas, and uh, he has been a great addition to the, the show. I, I have a, a, my utmost respect for him as a collector and as a TTMer. I also, as you said earlier, I write a weekly column now in sportscollectorsdaily.com. Uh, uh, usually posts on either Tuesday or Wednesday on TTM. Uh, check it out. I also have uh, a bunch of other articles. I just posted an article. I went to the uh, Rich Altman show in Wilmington, Mass. this past weekend, and I I posted an article on that. And I posted. I went to an event in Naples, Florida, called the Legends of Basketball, and I posted an article on that two weeks ago. I also, along with Drew, I host the only nationally syndicated radio show on sports collectors it's called the sports collectors club it is on the sports map radio network it is on 110 stations all across the country it's broadcast every sunday morning from 7 a.m to 8 a.m eastern time and they repeat it from 10 to 11 so we have it's kind of similar to the ttm cast podcast but 
there's a, there's a bunch of different content as well. So Drew and I host that on Sports Map Radio Network. You can go to Sports Map Radio. Uh, dot com, and you can learn where you can find it in your local area, or you can just download the Sports Map Radio app right on into your, your phone, and you can listen to it uh, the show directly from your phone if it's not in your area. Um, I think that's it. What else? I don't think I do anything else. <laughs> I was gonna say you're oh, a busy oh, guy. I think, my, I think the moral of the story is you're a very busy guy. I'll give you so my I'll social post- media stuff too as well. I yeah, I post ahead. I post all the time on Twitter Twitter. I'm on at cast TTM on Twitter. I post all my TTM successes, what's going on with the show. I'm also on Instagram at TTM cast and Facebook. We have a Facebook uh, page uh, at TTM cast. And I, I, I've been kind of dabbling a little in on, in TikTok and YouTube as well. I'm not as, vi- <laughs> I'm not as video savvy as you are, John, oh, yeah. but I'm, I'm learning. Not, I'm not, listen, you, you, I'm not that either. So if you, you're not that far behind me to begin with. I'm learning. You're about <laughs> six, you're about six months ahead of me. Yeah. Well, that, I, I, listen, I, I, I have a face for radio. There's a reason for that. So I, that's why I stick to more, more audio than video, but I do a little bit, uh, just, you know, you do this long enough, you almost have to by, by attrition, but yep. uh, you are not as far behind as you think. <laughs> Lastly, let me give you my, my email yep. address. If anyone has any questions about collecting TTM, uh, TTMing, if they want to ha- uh, have a, an idea for a guest on the show, if they want to ask questions, uh, my email address for everything is ttmcast at yahoo.com. It's ttmcast at yahoo.com. There you go. And you're, 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 uh, real quick, you have a guest coming up. Uh, plug plug oh, yeah, that th- guest. This Sunday, we have uh, Sudden Sam McDowell, who played uh, for a number of teams. a six-time AL All-Star who led the league in strikeouts five times. He played for the Cleveland Indians, the San Francisco Giants. He got, actually got traded for Gaylord Perry and Frank Duffy back in 1971, I believe. He also p- pitched for the New York Yankees and the Final year with the Pittsburgh Pirates, and he uh, was a huge six foot five left handed pitcher, and he was uh, the biggest drunk in baseball. And he wrote a new book, so we're, yeah. we're going to talk to Sam about his new book and uh, talk about his career, talking about TTMing and uh, signing autographs. And I'm actually giving away a signed copy of Sam's new book this there week. So we're, listen, listen to the show, find out how you can enter to win it. And uh, you know, Sam McDowell, he he was a great uh, interview. He talks about Roberto Clemente and Mickey Mantle and Reggie Jackson and his time in the major leagues and um, you know, um, co- overcoming alcoholism. And and yeah. uh, he worked with the we're, Toronto we're Blue definitely. Jays and the Texas Rangers after he, uh, after his career was over and worked in uh, working with them in terms of helping people with dependency, worked with Major League Baseball, was a member of the B- the BAT uh, organization from Major League Baseball, which, which helps out um, players that are, former players that are down on the luck. So he's a real interesting guy, and uh, his book is really fun. It's called um, Sudden Sam McDowell. It is uh, the I got it right here. It is the rise, fall, and redemption of Sam Mc, Sam McDowell. Yep. Great book. I was just gonna say redemption story. Redemption. Yeah, story, it is but... a redemption story. But yeah. uh, he's uh, you know he he's he's been through hell and back, and he he kind of um, yeah. outlines it all in the book. So uh, if you want to win a signed copy of Sam's new book, listen this week. There you go. Incentive. Incentives. There you go. <laughs> all right, Jeff. Hey, thank you for making some time for Sports Car Nation. Uh, sorry, I made you wait a little bit, but uh, here you are. And uh, uh, thanks for coming on, man. We had a great time. Uh, You're welcome. Thanks, John. I you. really appreciate it. I look forward to seeing you at the national. Yeah, and, and uh, you know, always, always stay in touch. All right, that's going to do it for another edition of Sports Car Nation. Thank you out there who listen, download this show. I've gotten some incredible feedback uh, again, continuing over the last uh, month or or so, and uh, I appreciate it uh, sincerely. Uh, This show doesn't exist without you existing, and uh, we never forget that. Thank you to Jeff Baker today uh, for joining the program. Uh, Check his show out. uh, Check out what he's doing. Uh, Really one of the nice guys of of the hobby, and uh, uh, appreciate uh, his friendship and uh, you know, we kind of came in at similar times, uh, and uh, so we share that sort of uh, fraternity uh, there. If you like the show, uh, we appreciate positive reviews and feedback, whatever 
platform you enjoy the show on. Beggars can't be choosers, as they say. So uh, appreciate uh, positive reviews, reviews. They kind of let everyone else know, hey, this show's pretty good. Check it out. And we appreciate it. And uh, again, my door is always open when I say my door. Metaphorically, you know, meaning email, direct messages, social medias, uh, you can uh, questions or comments or concerns or what, whatever. Um, you know, I've gotten again some great feedback, and uh, w- you know, I I truly uh, appreciate that stuff. So, all right, that's going to do it. We'll, we'll uh, be back next week. Uh, next week on this show, we're going to have. Ray Schulte and his son, Ryan Schulte. Ryan uh, uh, got to learn the ropes a little bit last year, uh, helping out and, and, uh, you know, getting sort of a a tour with uh, Brody and his own father, obviously. And uh, really smart and intelligent kid. Uh, Had them both on. It was a great conversation, and I think you'll uh, enjoy it. Not that Ray's great on his own, but uh, to hear from Ryan, too, uh, was a uh, sort of different type of interview. It was fun. Uh, you know, check uh, check back next week uh, for that. And we'll be back also on Monday for another edition of Hobby Quick Hits. So with that being said, we'll see you then. Take care. Be well. <laughs>